This episode of The Penguin is a perfect example of how everything that can go wrong in this show will go wrong. And that's what I love about it, because while everyone else is dealing with it in the show, we just get to watch it. Welcome back, everyone. Hello, it's me, Amanda, aka VampX13. I'm here to talk to you about The Penguin Episode 5, which honestly was straight fire. And I mean literally straight fire. Oh. But anyways, let's get into what happened in this episode. And before we do that, I just want to give you a fair spoiler warning. Spoilers ahead. We are going to be talking about the ins and outs of the episode. So if you haven't watched it yet, you've been warned. To give you a brief synopsis of what people are up to, last episode we were more focused on Sophia, obviously, and what's going on with her. This episode we shift focus a little bit. We go back to Oz and we see what he is up to. Now Oz is basically trying to just go for the full takeover at this point. He is trying to get a hold of the substances, these amazing psychedelic substances that he wants to use to cement his control over the city. So he's making his plays. Meanwhile, Sophia, after getting rid of pretty much all of her family, is also making her own plays here to start her own new family, taking her mother's name. The Maronis also have some stuff cooking because during all of this, Oz makes a play to kidnap the heir to the Maronis, who I believe his name is Taj. They kidnap him and they're trying to use him as leverage to get the mushrooms, which they do end up kind of doing. But ultimately, things do, of course, as I said, always go sideways. And Oz is forced to get his mom to a safe spot, which he entrusts Vic with. They go to Crown Point and Oz ends up joining up with them in the end. Meanwhile, Sophia, now that she's kind of established her own new family, is using the influence that she has to connect with Sal Maroney, who is by the end the lone survivor kind of of the Maroney family at this point, other than I'm sure he has people working for him. And she wants to offer him a truce. She says she's no longer a Falcone and and that together they can have a strong bond, take out Oz, who has messed with both of them, and ultimately run the city together. I think this episode, I didn't like it as much as last week's episode. I'm going to be honest about that. I did still like it quite a bit, though. Um, I really enjoyed what we had going here. I will say I watched this in the middle of the night when I definitely should have been asleep after doing other work. And I was thinking about waiting till this morning to watch it. And then I just thought, I'll just like at least put it on a little bit and maybe just get it started. And I couldn't stop watching. So it's still really, really good. But I do have a couple issues with it. I'll save that for the end of the review. But if you want to know what my problems were with this episode, we'll talk about that in a bit. But what did I like about the episode? Well, there is a lot to like here, to be honest. One of my favorite things about this episode and one of my favorite things about this whole world, honestly, from the Batman to the Penguin throughout the entire season is once again the world building that we get here, especially as it applies to Gotham specifically. I just feel like they make Gotham feel like a real place, like a real city, and it carries into this episode where we're getting lots of little details. I love how we are not just focusing on Gotham as a city, but we're also focusing on all the little parts that make it up, like Crown Point. We're talking about the East Side as well, which if you don't know, in the comics, the East Side tends to be Catwoman's domain. So Selina tends to be a protector usually of that area of Gotham. And the interesting thing at this point is that Catwoman is no longer in the city. At the end of the Batman, she leaves the city. So I am wondering how this will be when she comes back to the city ultimately, which I think will happen. And it even made me just get wishful thinking and think maybe we'll get a Catwoman movie and that would be really cool. Honestly, I really loved Zoe Kravitz as Catwoman as well. So I'd love to see more of that. I'd love to see her return and I'd love to see her in her own solo film or perhaps a series. I think that would be just really amazing and there'd be a lot to explore. And the fact that we're building a world that's rich enough for that to be something that I'm considering and considering how good it could be, how much potential there could be, is a huge testament to this show and this universe that we're kind of building that's kind of exists within itself. The Matt Reeves Batman universe, I guess. However, now that we're back also in Crown Point, that's ultimately where Vic takes Oz's mom to keep her safe. We do have to deal with the fact that um, I think things are going to get really 
bad. I mean, I know I things always get bad in this show. Well, they always set everything up like, oh, maybe everything will be okay. And then in the end, you're like, oh, I'm, I'm very worried. And this episode does actually end pretty hopeful with Oz and Vic sort of going down into these tunnels where trolleys used to be back in the day when Oz was younger that ultimately were shut down and now were abandoned and not many people know about them. Oz wants to use this as his new headquarters. It's dark, it's damp, perfect place to grow their mushrooms. And I was just thinking though the whole while that even though it ends on a note where we're not in immediate danger, I'm concerned. I feel like Vic did tell one of the ladies that works for Eve at one point where he was from. He mentioned he was from Crown Points. There's also a guy who runs the drops there, Squid, who clearly saw that Vic and Oz's mom went into the building, the apartment building where they're where they're hiding out right now. So I just feel like there's too many people that know about this and it's not gonna be as secure as we think it is. And I don't know who's making it out, honestly. I have concerns. I do like Sophia's takeover here. Once again, I just feel like Sophia is such a cool character. Everything she does is so unpredictable to me. I never know exactly what she's going to do. And yet every decision she makes makes sense with her character motivation. She's just such a well, thought out character. And of course we get Christine Miliotti, who once again is just delivering an amazing performance and is constantly with each episode blowing my mind. We didn't even get to talk about it last episode, but the dress. And there's another dress in this one that I also love, the black dress with the fur. Like, dang, Sophia, what are you doing to me? What are you doing to Julian Rush, who's also <laughs> decided he's going to join a crime family now? I, I don't know what he's going to bring to that, but he's a psychologist, so I maybe he'll be able to to talk around people. I don't even know what he's going to contribute, but I just love that he was like, I just want to join you. I think that's what I really wanted to. And you getting rid of your entire family made me see that. There's also a great conversation in this episode that Sophia has with the chief of police who comes to investigate after her family is uh, all mysteriously dead and she has survived and Gia has survived because they were in the greenhouse in the last episode. But she calls out kind of the chief of police in an interesting way. And it's something that talks about a greater problem with Gotham, where even when you fix the crime, even when you fix the corruption, there are just broken systems in Gotham that makes it kind of an, an irredeemable city. You can't really fix Gotham. And I thought it was a really fascinating conversation, well acted on both parts. And it just made me consider how Gotham is like kind of a place that you can't save. I feel bad for Batman in the next movie <laughs> as he's dealing with this. I feel bad for Batman all the time. I feel like Gotham is an uphill battle that you just can't win. Speaking of amazing performances though as well, we also of course have Colin Farrell who is just continuously crushing it as Oz. In this episode, we got a really intense moment where he sends Taj back to his mom. He's dripping and I knew, I knew as soon as he refused to remove the duct tape from his mouth, this kid was covered in gasoline and was going to be in a bad place. Although I will say, I feel like you would probably smell that, but I digress. He sends Taj over to his mom and then manages to light them both aflame as Taj has hugged his mom and so they're both covered in uh, fuel, I'm assuming, gasoline, something highly flammable, and sets them on fire and we just get this shot of Oz watching them as they burn. There's just this coldness and this ruthlessness in Penguin that really scares me that I really love that there can be so much nuance in this performance where sometimes Oz seems like a character that you kind of feel bad for or that you even root for but then he just has these moments where he almost switches. It's also interesting that he said in this episode that you know his mom is kind of what like keeps him like grounded in a way or keeps him good. His mom is what guides him. And I do feel like we're getting to a point where there's going to be a breaking point and there's going to be a complete switch where we're going to see Oz change and become really this scary villain, full villain of a character. I mean, he's already a bad guy. He's never been really a good guy, but I think the heart in him is going to be gone by the end of the season, or at least we're going to be moving towards that. It also makes me worried for Vic. I will say a lot of secrets have come out at this point. Penguin has all the cards on the table. We're kind of in the end game here where he knows 
I just got to wrap this up. I got to find a way to make the right plays and then the city could all be mine. He's on the precipice of it. But ultimately, Oz is a survivor. And there are a few things about him we still don't really know fully what happened to his brothers exactly. I mean, I don't think that Vic knows that during a time where he was being tormented and held by Sophia, Oz basically sold out one of Vic's friends, got him killed. I feel like there's going to be some stuff that's going to come up later where it's just like a house of cards and everyone that's connected to Penguin emotionally at any point those relationships could fall apart and Oz will just sell you down the river because it's ultimately about him surviving. So even if he really cares for someone, he's willing to sell them out to save his own skin. So what are the things that I was not a fan of in this episode? Uh, because obviously there was a lot here that I liked. There were just a couple plot points that felt a little bit convenient. And I think it's just because we didn't really spend as much time on them. I mean, one of them I can understand. And that is the one where they go and kidnap Taj at the tattoo shop because he's like being a dumb kid and he's posting about where he is. And he's like, the Maronis are coming back. And they're like, we're just going to go get him. And then we can use him as leverage to get what we want. And that's Oz's plan. But... It felt like, he, how is he going to get out of this? And then it was just a random thing that appeared. I know that it's already kind of been established with Alberto also being kind of this kid that thinks, you know, he doesn't have to consider consequences because he is the son of Carmine Falcone. Same kind of with what we see with Taj here. It's just this complete inability to understand that when you say certain things and you, you're putting yourself in danger because they feel like they're completely untouchable. So I kind of understand it, but it still felt a bit convenient. And then the other thing is Sal Maroney after the hit happens uh, from Oz, which he survives, and then he ends up getting out of prison. That's how Sophia is able to come to him and they make that deal. He survives getting shivved and has, manages to escape prison because Oz had a guard attack him and so he was able to get the keys and get out. But I don't think it's that easy to get out of any Gotham prison, especially after you've just been, you know, potentially mortally wounded. I was just like, did he just walk out? I mean, I guess he's Sal Maroney, so maybe he has pull. Let me know if you have some other theories for this, but it just seemed, once again, a bit convenient. But other than those points, I feel like this episode has also been really, really solid. I think I would give it still a four out of five. I mean, I have a few complaints, but they're they're minor. They're nothing that ruins the episode. It wasn't as good as last week's, but I was still compelled the com the whole time. And I just cannot wait to see where we go next with this show. So those are my thoughts on this episode. Let me know what you thought down in the comments below. I'll see you next time. And until then, friends, stay nerdy.